and welcome to the Powerplay Team Previews. A short series in which myself and a guest are going to look forward to the men's 2021 cycling road season by zooming in on the team's transfers, expectations and maybe a surprise here and there. And in this episode, I'm going to focus on Bora Anskoe and definitely not alone in this one because again, I'm going to be joined by Juri Einsen of Vilesplitz.nl. Juri, thanks for joining me again with your knowledge. Yeah, thanks a lot for uh, for inviting me again. It's uh, it's really uh, a pleasure for me to do this uh, this previews. I really like it, uh, like to do this. So uh, thanks a lot for the invitation. Great, great. I'm uh, yeah, I'm obviously happy to have you on and uh, yeah, to sh- that you can share your knowledge about this time about Bora. Uh, Bora maybe a mixed feeling last year. Some some they got their wins obviously with Ackermann in the sprints. Um, I think they were pretty happy with what they saw in the Tour de France of a Kemna. But then it also took a really, and Schachmann obviously in Paris, Perry Nice, who came out guns blazing in that season. But also it took an awful long time for Peter Sagan to get his first victory. He did it in epic fashion though in, in the Giro. And uh, I think there must be a bit of disappointment that uh, Buchmann missed the Tour de France and couldn't really show himself as a GC rider. So with, with, with what kind of feelings did they go into the off season? Um, uh, well, uh, I spoke to, uh, to uh, Dan Lorang recently. Dan uh, is uh, is from Luxembourg and is the performance manager of uh, of the German team. Um, um, he said, "Well, last season was okay, but it was like for years they uh, did better and better season by season." He said, "But the last year we, uh, yeah, uh, stagnated for the first time. Like we." didn't um, it was an okay season was a good season but we didn't really improve the two season so um yeah it was was a season with some ups and downs so they they got into the winter with some uh, with some mixed feelings so mixed feelings there for Bora Hansko but maybe um 2021 could be a bit like better again and they find that upward trajectory they had some riders leaving the team uh, let's put them up on the screen uh, Micah went to UAE Team Emirates, uh, Drew Kerr went to Kofidis, Gatto, uh, McCarthy obviously had that uh, really awful crash which he's still recovering of, uh, Mühlberger left to Movistar and uh, I think Poljanski retired I think in the end. Um, yeah. What's the, what's the biggest loss there? Um, well, I think that's the loss of uh, Gregor Mühlberger. Um, all people would say, uh, of course, Rafael Maika is, is a, was a top gun at Bora Hans Grohe, uh, but um, yeah, I think they uh, they replaced him with an even better rider for uh, for next year. But we will get to uh, to that uh, in a yeah in a couple of uh, of moments. Um, but I think the loss of Gregor Mulberger um, will hurt at that team because um, yeah they picked him up uh, after the U23 years. Um, and he uh, developed into a very strong rider. Um, maybe not the the rider who I expected him to be already after uh, yeah his last year in the under twenty three scene because he really rocked that last season. Um, and I I thought he would be able already to uh, to maybe um, uh, take a shot at the GCs of the one uh, one week races. Um, uh, or maybe at the at the tougher uh, one day races, but um, yeah, he's not yet capable of doing that. Maybe in the future, but obviously he did uh, a great job for uh, for Emu Buchmann in the Tour de France of 2019, where he uh, yeah he really showed himself uh, also as a as a very good climber in the in the high mountains. So I think um, uh, the the loss of of Mulberger will be the most uh, thing they will feel in 2021. Okay. Uh, but you already said they have some really strong riders coming in as well. So let's put them up on the screen. Uh, probably the biggest name here on the top of the list, Vilko Kelderman coming in from Team Sunweb. And then also Niels Spollett coming in. And they've got some really interesting riders, which you can probably expand on a bit later as well. We've got Wandal coming in, Jordi Meus, uh, who's already, I think, showing himself in uh, instead of Bezage. Uh, at the moment, Giovanni Aliotti, Mitchell Walls, Ben Zwiehoff and Anton Palzer, which is also a big mystery. Um, hmm. what, what can we make of this list for the people coming in? 
Uh, well, uh, like I just mentioned, uh, Micah has left, but they have replaced him with uh, with Wilco Kelderman, which I think uh, is is a better rider than Micah is. Uh, of course, uh, uh, the Polish rider is is a, is a very good climber, but lacking uh, in in time trial ability skills. Uh, Kelderman, on his place, is is really is also a really good climber, maybe even when he's in form, a better climber than Micah is. Uh, of course, has proven himself as a, as a very good time trialist, so he's the ideal GC rider. Um, also quite explosive. He doesn't show that uh, real often, but he is quite explosive. So, uh, yeah, uh, really good rider. Of course, third in the Giro d'Italia, which maybe he could have won if uh, if Jai Hindley waited for him in the, in the uh, famous Stelvio stage, but we will never know, but like, yeah, Wilco is a is a top rider, and um, Dan said to me he is uh, he's going to be the first or the second leader uh, for the GCs, uh, depending from the course. So, yeah, very good signing for uh, for Bora. Uh, Polit, of course, uh, really good rider for the for the Flemish Classics. Uh, will uh, Bora with him has a, another car to play? Um, Was that what Sagan needed for the? Yeah, I think so because. You always know uh, when Sagan is in the party, uh, yeah, he has his sprint. So you always have to uh, make sure he rides because if you go with him to the line, uh, nine out of ten times he will beat you in the sprint. So um, if, like, for example, one rider um, attacks in, in the Tour of Flanders or Paris-Roubaix or milan San Remo and and Sagan is caught up in the second group or in the chasing uh, group, yeah, all riders will say to Sagan, okay, get him because you're the fastest of us and yeah, we won't win if we bring you back. So with Niels Pollitt, the, they have uh, yeah, the opposite because Niels doesn't has, or is lacking sprinting abilities to the to the top riders like Wout van Aert, like Mathieu van der Poel, like Julian Alaphilippe. Um, so Niels always have to attack and that's the card Sagan needs if he wants to uh, yeah, get back in winning big races because Polit has to attack and other teams will, will know that. But on the other hand, Sagan can always say, okay, get him. Or, yeah, I won't ride because Niels is attacking. Or so, And if, if he's not attacking, then Polit with his time trial abilities uh, is a perfect um, helping guy to get back uh, attackers and put Sagan uh, there in a winning position again. So we can expect so very good signing. So we can expect more wins again for Peter Sagan this year. You think or? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I really think so. Uh, especially in the classics, uh, Polit is a, is a very good signing. Maybe not the, the top name, but for Bora, I think it's uh, yeah, it's a great addition uh, uh, of letting Sagan uh, or giving Sagan maybe again more opportunities to win races. And maybe next to uh, next to Sagan, getting more opportunities again because of this uh, addition. What does the addition of, of uh, a young talent like Jordi Meus mean for for their sprinting train? Because they already have Ackermann. What's their sprint going to look like in the, in this year? Well, um, Bora was uh, in average one of the oldest World Tour teams last year. Um, they uh, turned uh, to the world tour. I think it was 2015 or 2016, with a very young team, and they just matured over the years. Uh, they developed young riders into into top riders. But um, yeah, also next season they are going to say goodbye to some of the older riders, and uh, yeah, are going to get more young guns in uh, in the team. And for example, Jordi Meus is uh, is a great addition. He's uh, yeah, good sprinter the under 23 champion of Belgium so if you're you have that title you can surely uh, uh, yeah know how to ride a bike because Belgium of course is uh, is uh, yeah uh, a source of talent um, he is he will going to be uh, uh, placed in lead outs for the for the sprint train for now uh, and we, yeah they will see if he develops into a to a stop sprinter which he has the the qualities to but on the other hand, he's also very strong in uh, in the one-day races uh, on the on the Flemish cobbles, for example. Uh, so yeah, it, it 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 depends on in which rider he will develop. Uh, but uh, for now, they will put him into uh, to both. Like he will join the 
the classic squad, but on the other hand, also will have uh, his part in the sprint train of uh, of Ackerman and Sagan and, uh, as a leadout man. Um, maybe a bit like Marcel Kittel did in his uh, opening season with uh, with what was then Skill Shimano, where uh, Kittel was also a leadout man for uh, yeah. But for Kenny van Hummel, uh, <laughs> in those years, and of course he developed in one of the best sprinters uh, of of the last ten years. So, yeah, maybe Mills can do some 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 likewise, like uh, like Kittel. But I I think in the future he will be more a uh, uh, classics rider with a very good uh, uh, sprint uh, at the finish okay. line. And if we look at like a GC ambitions for for Bora, what's that going to look like in uh, in this season? Like we already mentioned him, Kelderman, Buchmann. What can we expect there? Um, well, they uh, will uh, send Buchmann to the to the Giro d'Italia, where he uh, the, the main goal for Bora this season is to be uh, on the podium of a Grand Tour. Uh, besides winning a monument, now winning a monument is of course um, um, most probably the the objective for uh, for Peter Sagan because yeah, with Ackermann maybe winning uh, in in Milan Sanremo, for example. Uh, could be the other rider who who is capable of doing that. Uh, maybe maybe Maximilian Schachmann also can can do something in Liège. But for the GCs, the objective is quite clear: get on the podium of a Grand Tour. And there are just two names in this selection who can do that. It's Buchmann in the Giro d'Italia, and Wilco Kelderman will uh, will um, yeah attempt to do that in the Tour de France. So uh, yeah, uh, they are those two guys: uh, Buchmann and Kelderman, on the two main. Um, main GC riders for this team and yeah Buchmann uh, has a hard job I think in the Giro because uh, like I mentioned in uh, in one of the other previews the field is already pretty strong over there um, with a lot of pure climbers and uh, the thing I know about the Giro parkour which is not officially uh, announced yet but there won't be time trial kilometers in there so uh, the Giro would suit the p- more pure climbers uh, Buchmann is a pure climber but I think there are more um, yeah, guys with more potential um, for that for that course. So it will be tough for him to get a top three uh, place in the Giro. Uh, on the other hand, for Kelderman, he has the perfect course in the Giro of in the Tour de France with a lot of time trial uh, kilometers. Um, I think he made a click in the Giro last year, where he obviously uh, uh, battled for the victory in the GC in the last week. Unfortunately, he got that third. But it was like his, his his goal in his career to be on the podium once of a goal. Yeah, uh, achieved that result last year. So I think it's it's like the the his own pressure maybe uh, has fallen off his shoulders, and also Bora is is giving him a lot of freedom, and they think that um, yeah they can get even more out of Wilco uh, by giving him that freedom. Uh, so maybe that's the key to success in the Tour de France and why not being on the podium in the Tour because I still think that Wilco is part of the yeah 10 guys in the peloton of uh, with the most uh, potential he only has to make sure he doesn't crash this season okay yeah that's always the thing with Wilco so let's fingers crossed that he yeah. doesn't crash but it's good to hear that there's uh, so much faith from you in in Wilco Kelderman and his uh, performance um Will we also see Peter Sagan back in the tour, back in that green jersey? Um, I think so, because, uh, like for the other hand, one of the sport directors of Bora uh, at the beginning of January told, uh, like, Peter Sagan is going to do the Flemish uh, classics, is going to do the Giro, is going to the Tour, is going to the Olympics, and, of course, has this world uh, championship course in uh, in Leuven in Belgium, which suits yeah. him really well. Uh, so uh, a fourth world title is something what is on the table for him this season. So it will be a massive busy season for Sagan. Uh, but uh, I talked to uh, Dan Lorang, like I said, um, two weeks ago, I think. And he said, well, we have to see that first. Uh, so I think he will choose between Giro and Tour. Um, but Dan also added... He will fully focus on the Flemish classics first. That's his main goal. And then we will see if uh, he will go to the Giro or the Tour. Maybe, of course, when he goes to the Tour, the G- green jersey is, of course, another big goal for uh, for this team. Uh, but on the other hand, I think if, if Sagan uh, does a great Flemish uh, uh, classics campaign, um, he could, of course, um, 
again uh, battle for the green jersey. But I think mid April, uh, mid mid April, he will think about that World Championships already because the chance is pretty big that he could add a fourth uh, world title to his palmarès and would be then uh, on the same foot uh, with uh, yeah with the record holder in the in the rainbow jerseys. Okay. Let's keep an eye on that. One more thing to close off this Bora Hansgrohe preview. Can you give me uh, the name of one rider which we have to keep an eye out for for Bora, for Bora Hansgrohe uh, this season? Um, okay. One rider, right? Yeah. And then I will go with one of the of the guys who just turned pro with the team. Uh, and then, it's, uh, then I will say Giovanni Aliotti will be uh, the one who could surprise this season. Very strong rider was already second uh, behind Tobias Foss in the Tour de Lavenir of 2019. Uh, had a great season in the in the Italian uh, under 23 ranks uh, last year. Uh, was or is the current under 23 road champion of Italy. Uh, good GC rider, also a very strong one day contender for the for the tougher courses. So, if there is one rider in this selection uh, which could surprise, it will be. Aliotti, I think. Aliotti, it is. All right. Thanks, Yuri, again for this uh, helping me with this preview of basically helping me dictating the preview of our team <laughs> Sorry, man. For, for 2021. No, it's great stuff. Awesome to have you here. Thanks again. Uh, thanks everyone for watching. Make sure you give Yuri a follow at Yuri underscore Einsen and follow his work on Vida Fits. And at the same time, make sure you like, share, and subscribe this content on the Powerplay YouTube channel. We'll see you at the next preview. Cheers. Bye. Thank you.